So our research speaker for this morning is a licensed agriculturist, a professional teacher. Uh, she took up her uh, bachelor's degree in agriculture at the University of Southern Mindanao, MS in agronomy in the University of Southern Mindanao as well, and uh, finished her doctorate degree in soil science in University of the Philippines, Los Paños, Laguna. She is currently designated as Professor Six at the Department of Soil Science, College of Agriculture, University of Southern Mindanao. She is also currently the, uh, the country pro project leader of land management of diverse rubber-based system in Southern Philippines, adjunct professor at the Griffith University, Australia. She is also a board of director of the National Organic Agriculture, board of the Department of Agriculture, national program leader, project leader of the Geographic Information Support System, Center for High Value Commodities and Indigenous Scraps for Soxargen Region, member of the National Technical Working Group for Scholarship Grant of uh, Dependence of the Sugarcane Industry of the Sugarcane Regulatory Authority, project leader of the Organic Agriculture Research and Development Center of the University of Southern Mindanao, vice president of Organic Agriculture Society of the Philippines, and uh, the program leader of College of Agriculture Agri Mobile Clinic started on uh, 2012 up to now present. She also um, had okay, uh, some awards. Okay, so among others, the 2018 Best Paper Award during the 21st Philippine Society of Soil Science and Technology, USM Outstanding Alumni for Research. Performing CA Faculty Award in Research, Top Performing College of Agriculture Faculty Award in Extension, and also Top Performing College of Agriculture Faculty Award in Production. Tayo po ay mapalad ngayong umaga sa ating, uh, na, ating pong maka, makakasama ating user speaker. Let us all welcome Dr. Adiflor R. Grant Garcia. Isa pong magandang umaga, Dr. Adiflor. Yes, magandang umaga, Angelo. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat na nandito ngayon sa ating uh, webinar na to. And thank you, Angelo. You're very generous in the introduction. Mas mahaba pa introduction mo yata sa <laughs> aking magiging lecture. But anyway, if uh, you would allow me, then maybe we can uh, start na. Start na ba? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, Yes, good morning, everyone. I'm glad that uh, you are with me today as I share with you the journey of the University of Southern Mindanao on geographic information system to support our initiatives on high value commodities and indigenous crops in Soxargen region. This uh, building that I am trying to show here is funded by Bureau of Agricultural Research or Institutional Development Grant and the facilities here funded by the Department of Agriculture, the ASIF uh, program. So thank you very much at the outset for the support. And uh, this morning, as I continue, this presentation is not a lecture on what is GIS. It's not also not about how to make maps, but uh, I would like to call to all our GIS experts, our GIS enablers. I would like to call all our stakeholders, our GIS enablers, to bring the power of the technology to its best use more than ever. For the past, you know, two decades, more than two decades, GIS information has been introduced to us, the university, by no less than the program also by the Bureau of Agricultural Research way back in 1998. From then on, we had always been with trainings and workshops on the geographic information system. And the SOOCs were invited or were involved the local government units also were involved in the training in trying to mainstream GIS 
in the Philippines. And of course, with that, I am very thankful again with the Bureau of Agricultural Research Project, then with Dr. Steve Godilano, with Rick Castro, and the rest of the IBAR personnel before who came down even to the university conducting trainings for this. So I think uh, we have a lot of trainings already and uh, we very well understand now and appreciate well the power of GIS, not only as a tool to create visual presentations of data, but also perform spatial analysis because that is very important in making informed decisions. And we have seen this, so many of these presentations about the different layers, how GIS is being done. And uh, one of the best use of GIS is in agriculture. And that one, I would like to share with you our journey at the university, how we persisted, I would say, how did we survive? When this started in 1998, the hardware was almost uh, zero. We barely have computers that are really, that could really run ArcView. But uh, with BAR again, they provided some of the hardware, but it was really, you know, how many units only. And for you to learn, you have to have one unit, but that is not possible in the past. And as we continue involving ourselves with all the trainings and the workshops and the activities on this, until finally, it took how many years before I was really able to convince the bar to give us this facility? And it was in 20. 16 that we started this and finally uh, the, the facilities or the hardwares that are important for this were provided in 2018. So what did we have? Of course when we had this already as a project we started of course we had been updating the databases especially the soil since I am uh, from the Department of Soil Science. And then, of course, we need all these thematic maps, the rainfall map. And now I am very happy. I have a map which is an average of 30 years uh, average. And because this is required, especially when you are doing suitability, this is the one that is required by the uh, criteria, especially FAO. And even for classification of soils, we need the three 30 year. Uh, mean of annual rainfall and even temperature and to that effect. So we have the soils map also of the different provinces of uh, the region, even up to the municipal level, where we can see the barangays. And uh, I would like to share with you the soils map of Lake Cebu, South Cotabato, where there are a few barangays, so we can see clearly the different soil types and the different soil series of that municipality. Because uh, our experience with the local government units, even with the agricultural extension workers, they are excited to see if they can identify themselves where they are. For example, if you are from this barangay and you can see and uh, it is also a, uh, I have also a very good, uh, I wanted to actually go down to the barangay level to really uh, make uh, more delineated maps so that the extension workers will be able to utilize this and the farmer themselves would identify where they are or even the users. Now to continue on, we have, this rainfall map and you can see highest rainfall in North Cotabato is 2350 with the lowest it's less than 1000 so uh, we really have good rainfall as far as crop production is concerned also although some are really low and uh, I am just happy that where low rainfalls the low rainfall are 
the irrigation are available because these are the lowland areas. The highlands have good rainfall. And uh, also in South Cotabato, we have good uh, soils map and uh, slope map. So with the suitability maps for high value crops, we have prepared for them the coffee, cacao, we have rubber, we have oil pump, and we have shared this to the different local government units for them to use for their planning. So we have these different thematic maps, the land use map in the different uh, regions of Davao, Davao del Norte, uh, the temperature maps of Davao del Sur, and all the thematic maps for the different provinces in region 11 and 12. Uh, in fact, I would like to show you this pest and disease monitoring of Bruntispa, where I would like to show you uh, sa Luzon talaga, medyo mataas ang incidence natin yan. And here in our province, or here in Mindanao, we have very low incidence in the province of Sultan Kudarat. For example, this one is the data of the province of South Cotabato. So some, these are some of the things that uh, are very useful for the local government units, especially the agricultural extension workers. And our project prepared a website for, we, I put there the AUSM Smart Agriculture because uh, this is where the output of our activities are housed so that any one of our farmers enrolled are able to access information that they wanted to. So among others, I would like to show you our, the GIS maps loaded on this website and they can, uh, uh, of course, we have this also in the website, but uh, I will just uh, uh, present to you an example of our maps that our clients can access online. We have these maps uh, for region 11 and 12 loaded here because the project is within this region only. But there are some other regions I included also here in the presentation. So this is our URL. And uh, let me share. Our output for, you know, there are different uh, con aspect of this project, but I will uh, uh, show you the GIS. So with this, you can just input your name and then an email address. Then select the region, so that's region 12. And then the agency where you are connected, this is just for purposes of recording who are accessing the website. And then You are shown this, uh, like for example, you wanted to see the soils map for that particular region. So, to palang po ang laman tatlo, and then for a particular province, we have, for example, North Cotabato, and then the municipality, for example, of Carmen, and then there. Uh, the map will be loaded, uh, naglo loading lang po. So ayan, then if you can, if you wanted to zoom it, and then this is downloadable po. And so you can access, you can access the soils map, the, the soils map, the elevation map, uh, suitability map of that particular uh, municipality. And this is intended really for the local government units so they can make use of whatever uh, information they wanted. So uh, that's an example of uh, that's an example of uh, this uh, map that we have, and uh, just to continue on with. Uh, 
if you wanted to go to region 11 then you can just uh, navigate here and so on and uh, so forth so uh, my uh, my invitation for our GIS practitioners or our experts I would like you to share your expertise on this and share it to the local government units because we had been we had been trying to invite them make maps uh, it is not going to be that easy for them in fact for us also not to mention about the hardware about the software it's at least good now we have the open source qgis um uh, not like before not like before when uh, we didn't have the qgis we only have the arc view where it's very expensive so the other units cannot really practice making maps so that's uh, uh our sharing with the other uh we do our outputs with region 11 and region 12 and so we tried to deploy these different technologies with our partner agencies so for the lgus in region 12 we have shared that and we have also a partner Agusan del Sur because we have a project on Asia and so we also uh, encourage them because their GIS unit is also very functional and uh, we encourage them to help the agriculture sector to use GIS technology and this is their output. Of course, in the region, we try these uh, activities also, uh, trying to improve these uh, maps. And uh, we, in fact, had produced already the verified soil map of North Cotabato. We tried to really go back and ground. We did some ground truthing for the different soil series, and we have uh, improved our soil map in North Cotabato. And uh, we have corrected some. And so our LGU partner, the provincial government of Agusan del Sur, have also uh, prepared online maps to be accessed that could be accessed also through their portal. And let me share with you what they have. These are the different maps that they have, the different uh, municipalities. Dennis, paano ito ay... Ito na? Ito na ba? Let me, let me play a video presentation. Our online mapping system or the GIS can be accessed by opening our browser because it is web-based system and type the URL https colon slash slash pigas.ph um, Hello po ma'am, excuse me po. You will view the employees portal of the provincial government of Agus and Del Sur. Among different image links and information in the portal, you have to hover over the monitoring and evaluation group of systems. Upon hovering into it, you will Hello see... Hello po, Dr. Eric Floor. So just click that. Hello po, uh, sir. Uh, ito po ba ay video? Yes, sir. This is video po. Uh, because we can still see the slide po. Ay, okay, sorry. Sorry. Okay, uh, po. So okay just, po, sir. I should change the, ano, sir, the settings ng uh, sharing siguro po. Ay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Share. Sorry, Angelo. Hindi naman ako marunong maganyan-ganyan. That's ang alam okay, ma'am. <laughs> ang alam ko lang, mag-click-click, eh, hindi ko na... Ano ba ang nangyari? Hindi nyo makita? 
Uh, we can only hear the audio, ma'am, from the video that's being shared. I. Paano yan? Huh? Our online mapping system Can you see it na, Angelo? Uh, still the audio po, ma'am. Okay. Our phone, sir. Uh, dali lang. Okay Kasi po. Siguro, siguro po while we're setting the, the, the video that's being shared, let me remind uh, our audience as well not to forget uh, filling out our attendance sheet. So for those who are uh, joining us via live, FB Live, nandun po sa comment box natin yung link for uh, the attendance sheet. And for those who are with us here via WebEx, nandito rin po yung ating link. And then again, after nyo pong i-fill out yung attendance sheet natin, you will be receiving or you will be directed to another link and that's for the evaluation. Okay, so let's uh, let's wait for uh, the video. Our online mapping system. How is this? Uh, we can rin. see the e-portal interface box. Okay. Or the GIS can be accessed by opening our browser because it is web-based system and type the URL https colon slash slash pigas dot ph then hit enter key. You will view the employees portal of the provincial government of Agusan del Sur. Among different image links and information in the portal, you have to hover over the monitoring and evaluation group of systems. Upon hovering into it, you will see a share link. So just click that. After clicking the a share link, you will be rerouted to the web app. You may provide username for a first time user, but for the second timer or validator, you can just click the stored username. Then provide a password and click the login button. Viola, here it is. This is now the landing page of the Asia project website. This landing page features the calendar of activities and the financial status of the project. On the left pane, listed are the menus such as dashboard, calendar of activities, trials, literatures, reports, media re releases, communications, gun chart, project member profile, and organizational chart. It has also menu for map resources, where our online maps are stored, the Asia Rubber Forum, Finance, Maintenance, and the Survey Resort. As an example, clicking the left rangers menu, it will display all the uploaded materials classified as literatures. You can download it, remove, or edit it. Emphasizing on the map resources, clicking the menu will reroute us to the GIS module of the system, the Geographic Information System of Asia project. User may change the base map by clicking the drop down list and choose the most appropriate map for a study. They can choose terrain, satellite, open street map or the hybrid below the base map option a group of map players group into three the Asia project other map players which contains available and existing map of the local government unit and the last group is the process map players this group contains results 
from the multiple clipping geoprocessing operation. On the other hand, on the left pane of the page, a map legion and display control is located. This is where the GIS basic operation can be found, such as the name of the layer added, a closed proton that will cause immediate removal of the layer from displaying, a zoom in and out control buttons, and other operations. The most important of all is the geoprocessing operation. Clicking this button will display the criteria and parameters for calculating soil suitability analysis. When you expand the layer, you are provided with a lot of operations. A button to display the attributes of the map, a summary button, opacity to control and adjust transparency of the map layer, displaying and hiding the label, and changing the font size. On the bottom part of is the legion with corresponding polygon color, in which case user can customize the color and the pattern. Looking at the map layers under the point group, it shows the average annual rainfall, temperature, farmers, soil sampling grid, farm demonstration site, and the OSAD farmers. So far in this project, there is no map in line features thus it's empty. For the polygon, it has topography, soil, physical, and chemical characteristics, land use, geologic, and semi-processed layers, and the watershed. Expanding the topographic group of layers, it contains elevation and slope. Under soil physical characteristics are soil depth, texture, drainage, and flooding. For soil chemical characteristics group, a layer of pH, CEC, and base saturation can be found. Including the previous mentioned layers, this view is a sample of a farm demonstration site. On the right side pane is a check layer name, and on the left side pane is the loaded layer name containing other information and operation as you expand it. Clicking on the point, it will display the attribute and data of that particular point, such as the object ID, the barangay name, municipality name, the cooperator, and other attributes embedded into the layer. This layer is the soil sampling grid. A soil sampling grid in a zoom in view. Clicking directly on the point will prompt or display data about that grid being selected. This shows that the selected point is in the municipality of Prosperidad. A zoom in view of the map. To display the attributes, clicking the attributes button will display a grid containing all the points or features of the map. There are four buttons at the top of the grid, namely copy, CSV, Excel, and PDF. Clicking these buttons will export the data to a desired format. This map shows the soil physical characteristics, particularly the texture. To determine the summary, clicking this image icon will display the summary and the total hectares. From that pop-up form, you can change the summary attribute by clicking the drop-down list and then select the desired parameter and the system will calculate the summary for you. So, as per previous slides, it shows the summary per texture, but as of this time, it displays the summary per soil series. Still, the total hectare is the same. The slide demonstrates different map layers included, namely OSAD farmers, soil sampling grid, farm demonstration site, elevation, slope, 
land use, watershed, flooding, and soil series. This is the proposed suitability criteria for rubber to determine the highly suitable, moderately suitable, marginally suitable, and not suitable area in Agu Sandel Sur. There will be 11 layers involved, namely annual rainfall, temperature, slope, elevation, depth, texture, drainage, pH, CEC, organic matter, and the last is base saturation. In determining the suitable area, the team proposes two options. The first is a series of geoprocessing clip tool, which is based on vector. It is dynamic simply because anybody could manipulate and play around with the criteria and see the result online. The second option is using a multiple geoprocessing tool. It is basically a raster based converting vector to raster, the raster to vector, back and forth, done using QGIS manually, take time to process and it's offline. To elaborate the option one operation, the first layer will be clipped with the second layer. The resulting clipped layer will then be clipped to the third layer. The resulting clipped layer will then be clipped to the fourth layer, so on and so forth. And at the end of the processing is the rubber suitability map. Option two processing, reclassification, the soil characteristics, climate character characteristics, and the topographic data. The reclassification is taking into consideration the parameters of the rubber and intercropping requirements. A weight and rank will be established to be considered in the manipulation of layers to come up with a rubber suitability. To demonstrate the option one soil suitability operation, clicking the mm -hmm. button geoprocessing will display the criteria configuration page. This page, you can add and remove layers dynamically depending on what criteria you want to play around and see the result right away. You can select attribute and specify the values as parameters. After setting all the conditions, configuration and criteria, clicking the process button will do series of clipping geoprocessing operation on the fly. In this view, the first layer is the watershed and the layer displayed with pattern slanting line is the resulting layer of the series of clip operation. That shows the highly suitable area for wrapper. Upon clicking the summary button, it displays the total area disaggregated by soil series, which has a total of 44,086 hectares, which is 33% of the Hibong watershed area. So as of now, the team is still enhancing and perfecting the option one geo processing where bugs are still encountered. Once mm -hmm. these issues will be fixed, it will be a tool for local planners to identify possible areas for a certain commodity with ease and convenience without needing so much technical expertise in geoprocessing. So we are also in the process of developing modules to print these maps online. Uh that is a presentation uh, actually I wanted to share our partners in Agusan del Sur on what they have now on their portal with uh, the GIS maps and uh, and uh, we are continuing of course uh, on the capability building portion of the of the agricultural extension workers who are the ones really who will be using this and in fact uh, we started uh, 
trying to develop an open source Android application in mobile platform that could be used online or offline, I should say. Uh, in the field, the reality is internet are not really that available and the agricultural extension workers are constrained with internet connectivity. So with their mobile platform, we hope that they can use the maps whenever they go to the farmer's field so they can identify the series and all of those uh, information they're in in that particular coordinate or in that particular farm and also uh, we have made a proposal to also make uh, an android application in identifying soil types because this will help a lot the extension workers in the local government units to be able to carry out their activities as far as agricultural development is concerned. But of course, there are more for pests and diseases and other applications later could be embedded in it. So uh, I think uh, these are the things that I would like to share. And uh, we have started this trying uh, to uh, the development of these Android apps. And uh, I would like to thank you for joining me today. And uh, let me ask uh, or make a call to the JIS experts that you we have in the country to share your talents in bringing the technologies to the countryside to ease the burden of the development workers, especially with this uh, technologies on the tip of our fingers. Let's share it to them so they can better do their jobs as far as agriculture is concerned. Thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity to share with you our journey here at the University of Southern Mindanao. Thank you so much, Dr. Garcia, for your wonderful and very comprehensive presentation. Marami pong salamat. At naniniwala po kami sa pagkakataong ito. Naku, mukhang uh, marami po siguro sa ating mga taga-subaybay ang uh, gustong magtanong or mag-clarify. Kasi nga, di ba parang everyone nowadays has uh, their own mobile or smartphones, which is very advantageous. Kasi, di ba, with, with the presentation that you had a while ago, just a while ago, ma'am, you can access so many information simply by using uh, the app or uh, the database, something like that. Uh, I would like to invite... Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? Pa? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, ma'am, your video is turned off. Po. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. okay yes. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, can we invite our uh, WebEx participants? If there's any who would like to ask, please feel free to raise your hand. So we can acknowledge po. And feel free to raise your hand. We have participants from uh, RDA attached agencies, ma'am. We also have uh, from different uh, DA regional field offices as well. Okay, so siguro habang naghihintay, o baka kinocompose pa nila yung tanong nila, I have received a question here, ma'am. A while ago, you've said po na currently or to date, uh, nandoon po kayo sa stage na you are uh, developing different uh, sites, maybe, or different features of uh, the GIS. So in connection to that, uh, to that po, if uh, a certain region, for example, or agency or partner would like to develop a map okay, by themselves, paano po kaya yung uh, collaboration ma'am? Like for example, a particular institution would like to, to develop a map on soil health analysis, for example. How does that work? I mean, pa paano po yung collaboration ma'am? Do they, uh, do they uh, coordinate with you right away? para yung magiging result po dun sa research nila ay magiging integrated doon po sa GIS natin? Or do they go directly to the uh, LGU and then it's the LGU coordinating with your uh, group, ma'am? Uh, it uh, depends on how uh, how they could carry out. If directly, they can, they can directly go to us and ask assistance, but 
if it is an LGU, then it would be better if their LGU really would be supportive of their endeavor because medyo madaming assistance ang kailangan nila. First, ang kanilang hardware, kumusta kaya, ang kanilang mobility, because we can very well provide them the maps, why not? But uh, some data that they may be interested, they have to gather it for their LGU. And uh, the basic maps, we can provide them. For example, the soils map, we can help them. But if they wanted more details, then maybe we, they can add on for the database so that we can make better uh, working maps for them. Uh, they can come and uh, really seek assistance. In fact, we had invited so many local government units already in the region, and some of the LGUs have uh, responded, and we have started, we have already trained at least two LGUs who are interested in trying to uh, really have their database on GIS in their particular municipality. And it would be ideal if all LGUs have this database on their own, but of course they can also access what we have, but they really have to build up their own database. Okay, thank you so much for uh, for the question, ma'am. Ayan, we have received another question. Good morning po. This is from uh, Nikai Abrigo from BSWM. I would just like to know po kung saan po galing yung information na ginamit for the development of the maps. Well, our base map, uh, as uh, we have started, we have the base map provided to us by the A bar. We call it the bar sales. And then later, we get from Namriya, the barangay boundary. And then uh, we updated this with uh, some uh, information from DNR. But basically, Namriya and bar sales or the base map from Bureau of Agricultural Research were used. And of course, the soils map has been accessed from the BSWM also. And I hope uh, BSWM, is this Mikai Abrigo? Yes, uh, if you are listening, Miss Mikai, I hope uh, we can really uh, make more details about our soils map because uh, we really have to update this. We need some ground truth thing to really update, especially the provincial maps, so that the municipal maps can be better uh, projected. Siguro sa Luzon area, uh, madami na kayong mas uh, updated na maps, pero dito sa uh, amin, sa Region 12, sa Mindanao, not 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 so much information is uh, available in terms of the shape file or the base map. Ayan, thank you so much, ma'am. Actually, that's very encouraging, ano? Kasi uh, for those who are doing research, if I get it right, po, they can collaborate, diba, in the in the development of uh, the database with with the with the different layers na up until now, pwede po natin ma-update. Okay, so that's actually a call for collaboration if I got it right. Another question, ma'am, with the current undertakings po ba ng ating uh, project, which is the GIS, ano po yung um, specific na high-value commodity or indigenous crop so far yung masasabi natin na nag-benefit talaga with this uh, type of technology so that it, so it can serve as an inspiration to those who are uh, planning to venture into this type of technology? Well, uh... We have uh, prepared uh, suitability map, for example, for rubber and for oil palm. And so far, the provincial government has started using this, especially in the seedling, yung plant now, plant, 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 plant now, pay later, plant now, pay never. And all of those projects uh, where there are seedling dispersals, especially for perennial crop, crops like rubber, like oil palm here in our province, and also the other provinces. 
and even for cacao now, because the university is nicer for cacao, we are using this for expansion purposes for the cacao industry. And the Nestle Philippines has also collaborated for the cacao coffee expansion also in Region 12, and we are using some of our information on the suitability maps for these high-value crops. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Garcia. As I am checking uh, the comment section, sa webex po natin. Uh, ayan, we still have one. Uh, ah, okay, this is a comment more than a section. Uh, a question, rather. Ayan, so once again, maraming salamat po, ma'am. Last but not the least, this is not actually a question, but... Uh, we, we've been receiving comments from uh, the FB Live viewers and uh, the WebEx participants as well. E, will it be okay, though, po, if they get a copy of our video presentation? Yeah, okay. No problem. Ayan, so maybe we'll just channel it uh, through the email na ipoprovide din naman po ng participants natin via the attendance sheet. So once again, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, in checking... Uh, the comments yeah. are fine. Angelo, yeah. there is a comment here from BSWM, Ronald Alan Di Maano. Uh, regards the soil type or the soil series data na nabanggit nyo. To develop soils map is at all primary or some are secondary. Kasi we are currently updating the soil map ng Pilipinas. Now, I'm just wondering kung walang taga DSWM na involved, e eh baka magkaiba ang output natin ng soils map, lalo na ang primary na makikinabang ay ang ating mga magsasaka. Yes, Ronald, uh, um, we, of course, uh, are trying to use the, we're trying to, access as much as possible the very original uh, soils map of North Cotabato and of course we have all those miscellaneous land types and uh, mountain soils undifferentiated and uh, we actively went around North Cotabato especially to at least uh, update this and verify them Maring magkaroon talaga ng uh, magkaibang uh, data, for example, maybe, because uh, um, our observations could differ. But uh, as much as possible, we are trying our best to identify those mountain soils undifferentiated based on available information from the geology, from all other uh, resources that we can have. And uh, it would be nice if uh, the Bureau of Soils will really have the updated map the soonest on the provincial and municipal level so that we will have a better database of our soils here in our place but uh, as uh, we had been here we had been trying to really study our soils for example here in north cotabato and uh, we had extensive verification also in agusan del sur and in fact our base was the survey made by the bureau of soils and water management way back in 2013 of Agusan del Sur. And uh, we are, uh, of course, uh, enjoying the database that you have given there. What we are only doing is making more detailed, uh, getting more detailed information on the different soil series that you have identified. So far naman, wala namang conflict po. It's just uh, making more detailed information on the soil series that has been established by BSWM.
Okay, thank you ma'am. We have we still have a question. Ito naman po ay galing sa FB Live uh, viewer natin. From uh, the question is from uh, Mr. Elmer Pita Valles. Good morning ma'am. Is there a possibility to develop a unified GIS map? To unify maps from the DA Craft Suitability Map from BSWM, Project NOAA, Namria, Pag-asa with data available from LGUs to benefit or to become beneficial for the LGU students, researchers, and other agencies? Um, napakaganda sana pag meron tayong ganyang map na nandun na lahat sana ang information. Ang hindi ko lang talaga alam, sir, kung who would spare here that one. But uh, if only we can join together and make... Uh, these thematic maps that we need at the municipal level, then everybody will be very happy, especially our agricultural extension workers who are wondering how to interpret the different maps that are downloaded to them by the different agencies also. In fact, uh, it has uh, created so much confusion already. Okay lang kung nasa, nandiyan kayo sa uh, head offices, you have access to all of this. But for those who are here in the municipal level facing the farmers, it's not going to be very easy. Much more on the interpretation of those maps that are made by the different agencies. Sana po. Ang bar na lang ang mag head, BSWM kaya, or Angelo, sino kaya? <laughs> okay, thank you for that call to collaborate, ma'am. I believe naman with, uh, with our uh, vision and mission, tayo playing different roles. Uh, there will come a time, surely, na we'll be able to address such of concerns especially we are well we are all gearing towards empowering our farmers and fisher folk so once again maraming salamat po sa lahat ng ating participants both from fb live at sa atin pong webex